All right, green hair algae. Had uh, was dosing AB plus, red C AB plus for a while, and it was too much. And I got it green hair algae from it, I think, because everything else, my nitrates, my phosphates seem to have been low. But anyway, so my my uh, cleanup crew can't keep up. They're doing their best. Hi, Hank. So this rock here, there's nothing on it but these two crappy looking SPS acropores. So instead of just spraying, what we're gonna do is hydrogen peroxide in the tank. I don't wanna put everything in danger, I wanna do an experiment. So what I got is I got a bucket of fresh salt water. I'm gonna put hydrogen peroxide in it and here in Canada, we can only get 3%, so it's very low. And I'll take this rock out, dip it in there, see what it does, rinse it, put it back in the tank. That way I don't have to do a big massive water change in this tank. So uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so what I've done is I've put half a bottle of this 3% hydrogen peroxide into this container. And I wanted to leave the corals mostly exposed, but see, look how, look how much algae is on. This is the worst rock I have. So hopefully it starts to bubble. I think it is bubbling. It's very hard to see. So we're gonna let it soak in here for a bit. And then uh, we're gonna rinse it off. We're gonna put it back in the tank. All right, she's bubbling now. So, oh, look at that, a bristle worm came out. So, a couple of bristle worms came out. Cool, eh? Anyway, that's because this water's colder. So, I'm not sure how long I'll let it sit, but we're gonna let her sit for a bit. Like I said, it is salt water, so it shouldn't hurt the corals too much. Okay, sorry about all the, I just fed the fish and uh, just cleaned the glass, so there's a lot of sediment right now. But anyway, so there's algae that hasn't been touched. And there's the hydrogen peroxide treated algae, so it's like gone white. So we're at 48 hours later now. I didn't want to do a 24 hour video because it hadn't changed much, but as you can see, the algae is dwindling away and the coral are doing just perfectly fine. So dipping the whole coral in hydrogen peroxide did not seem to cause any issues so far. So if this does work and it eradicates the algae in this rock, then slowly over the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna dip this small rock and this guy here and eradicate the algae that way. We'll see how it works to give you an update. All right, so now that we know what's going on with that rock and that it survives and it doesn't kill the coral, I've got this other big rock. This is the other biggest rock full of algae. Made sure that there was no snails or animals in this bad boy. As you can see, the bristle worms come off and you can see, look at all the bubbles. So another bottle, a whole bottle of hydrogen peroxide in this fresh salt water. And uh, we're gonna keep going with this and see how it goes. Hey everybody, so the hydrogen peroxide, as you can see, worked perfectly on that rock and that rock. The, 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 the sorry, the algae that was left was eaten by this guy. This is Herbie and this is our sea hare. Look at that. Very rarely do you see him come out along the glass. But he does. And uh, so the experiment worked with the green hair algae. Now we haven't done everything. We have to save some for Mr. Herbie here. But when you take a rock, you dip the whole rock in hydrogen peroxide, you kill the algae, you also kill pods. And we have this guy here, Hank. He's my male mandarin dragonette. And he is fat as fat can be and doing fantastic. So we have pods coming to help replenish some of the pods that we lost during the hydrogen peroxide. Oh, look at this. I have not been able to see him do this. So he, we, well, we, well, we call them a he, but they're actually hermaphrodites. Um, cool animal. They will ink if they get frightened or scared or attacked. But uh, there's no issues here. He moves so slow, the fish don't even know he's there. And uh, really cool animal. Munches on algae all day. Like I said, this rock was full the other day. It's gone. <coughs> but this is pretty cool. I really get to see him do this. There you go. I just cleaned that glass, dummy. But they've got a strong sense of smell. They have very weak eyesight. They can basically just see light and dark. And uh, they like to hide a lot during the day when it delights and bright. And uh, he looks around for algae and munches on the hair algae because 
This guy is not going to do it. No, I'm not doing that. None of the other fish are going to do it. So that's why this guy's here. And once all the algae has gone, I'm probably going to give him away or rent him out. And uh, he is a Dobalella? No, I, oh, Dobalella. I forget the name. I'll get back to you on that. The Dolabella <laughs> sea hare. So they are considered supposedly to be expert only. Um, but I carbon dose, my nitrates are usually five, phosphates about 0.1 max. And uh, I haven't had any issues with inverts. So we, we also have some sea urchins in this tank, some tuxedos, there's three tuxedo urchins in this tank. And they help to clean and eat algae. There's a little baby one we got there. And the other one's hiding somewhere, but he's there. But anyway, the spotlight is on this guy here, Mr. Herbie. Very cool to see him come out. They move relatively slow and they'll, they will actually grab the, the uh, algae and pull it. And then they will munch on the rock and clean the rock off solid. So um, stay tuned. So this is the, the second part to this algae removing uh, thing here. So yeah, look at that rock. That rock we dipped it a week ago, full of hair algae, hair algae gone, full of hair algae, just a spot there on the Acropora that's gotta be cleaned off. But uh, anyway, I thought I'd do a cool portion of this video on the Dolabella sea hair. So if you're relying on tangs and crabs, hermit crabs, snails, urchins, things like that to eradicate all your algae. Um, <clears throat> that's not really a good thing to do in my opinion. Um, and this all happened, as I said earlier, because I was dosing Red Sea B plus and doing what they said on the bottle. And I went from a perfectly clean tank to green hair algae in about two weeks. So that was a lesson learned. So now we are trying to eradicate and fix the algae. And as they always say, nothing good happens fast in reef aquariums. So I have no problem being patient. Uh, I've been carbon dosing again. My nitrates are two ppm. So I've been keeping my nitrates and phosphates low, two ppm phosphate, or sorry, nitrates, phosphates is like 0.01 now. So we're in, the, we're in the window. So that's all we can do at the moment and let nature do its thing. Um, so I dosed Vibrant for a while because I had some Vibrant left. That was a big mistake. Um, between that and some stray voltage in the tank, I had some issues with some corals retracting, uh, not looking too happy. Uh, a couple LPS corals have kind of, not shit the bed, but are not happy. So now they're gonna have to recover. Um, I've also started to feed refroids and copepods again um, with the carbon dosing to let the corals kind of recover a little bit. So this has been a not a massive lesson, but everything has been doing pretty good. I mean, this tank uh, is a year and uh, eight months old now. So we're rocking and rolling. Lots of corals, lots of good things happening. Look at this. Brand new Ganyapora. Beautiful, we'll see how that works. New Acropora frag. There's Herbie, look at that. He decided he was gonna climb up the top of the tank from down there up here and clean the algae that's in the strainers for the overflow. Hey, cool. I mean, hey dude, you're supposed to be over here, but whatever, that's cool with me. So to wrap this video up, um, I can, I'll do another uh, update video eventually when all the algae's gone, but hey, you guys know what algae looks like and when it's not there. So, but anyway, this water box 65.4 has been doing really well. Um, I don't have this crazy aquascape. I've talked about it before where people have all these shelves and this, this <clears throat> negative space. This is not what I'm about. What I'm about is having all kinds of corals, having a big wall, and I have caves and caves and caves for the wrasses and the fishes, the fish to hide. That's what this aquascape is all about. It's not about pleasing you, it's about pleasing what's in the tank. So I'm happy with it, it's been doing well. Great tank, Waterbox makes a fantastic product. Thank you for, to them. And uh, anyway, yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. So dipping the rock, 
in hydrogen peroxide kills the algae. Boom, boom, no hydrogen peroxide. However, it kills copepods and good things in the tank as well. And since we have, as we said before, Mr. Hank, hi Hank, uh, we don't want to kill us pods. So we bought Herbie. And if Herbie can't get the job done, then we'll loan him out. And then we can do some more hydrogen peroxide dipping. And I have ordered six bottles of uh, pods, copa pods from Canada copa pods to make up for what we've dipped for uh, with hydrogen peroxide so that Hank is good. And so as our, um, we have a diamond sand sifting goby in there as well. So anyway, guys, hope you've enjoyed this lesson learned and the journey with me. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like.